Welcome everybody to another edition of Frank's Amazing Podcast. I am your host, Frank Agino. The Mets are in the news for good and for bad and kind of in between. Pretty busy day, finally. I mean, I've been waiting to talk about the Mets every day since pretty much the season ended. But here's the thing, there has been very little news with the Mets, good or bad. And the thing is, is that the teams in their division are being very active, which we also are going to talk about today because... This news has to do with the Mets as Zach Wheeler signs with the Philadelphia Phillies five years for $118 million. Now, it sounds like a lot of money, but here's the thing. Zach Wheeler is a really good young pitcher, and those are hard to find, and they're very important. So for the Phillies, they definitely made the right move because you had Aaron Nola, who was a Cy Young. He was in the top three a couple of years ago, and then you had a really nice year from Jake Arrieta last season. After that, the Phillies' rotation depth, it was very inconsistent. It was not something that you could count on. And it's something that has to improve if the Phillies do want to reach the playoffs, which obviously are their aspirations. When you make the move to have Joe Girardi as your manager, spend all the money you did in the previous offseason getting Bryce Harper, and then making the trade for JT Real Muto, the Phillies, they expect to make the playoffs. And getting a move like Zach Wheeler, that will help your chances. What I find fascinating is you could say, yes, no $118 million for Zach Wheeler. Seems like a lot. He has had injuries in the past. That is true. He's had inconsistencies. That is also true. But here's the other thing is that the Chicago White Sox were offered Zach Wheeler more than the Philadelphia Phillies did. And there were other teams that were in the $100 million ballpark. So that gives you a perfect idea of what Zach Wheeler's value was. And that was $100 million. Meanwhile, we know the Mets gave Zach Wheeler a qualifying offer. Wow. And what offer that was. Other than that, we didn't really hear the Mets being that involved with Zach Wheeler. Which is very unfortunate because Wheeler's an important part to what the Mets want to do as a team as well. Because if Brody Van Wagner wants to make the claim that the Mets are in win-now mode, Zach Wheeler is a part of that. You need a really good starting rotation if you are the Mets and you do want to get back to the playoffs. Because as I've said a bunch of times and as everyone else knows, it's such a given. But it's so important to remember how the Mets got to the World Series in 2015. How did they get to the playoffs? And the way they did that was through young starting pitching, quality starting pitching, having a chance to be in every single game and having the opposition not score that many runs, which puts your offense in a much easier position because if your starting pitcher is giving up five runs, six runs, not going deep into games, then you have to rely on your bullpen for a long time, which we know from the Mets would be a complete disaster. It makes it very hard to win games. But when you have a good starting rotation all around, you're in every game, and it doesn't take much from the other areas of the team to win games. And that's what it comes down to if you want to be a playoff team. I mean, you're going to need at least 90 wins, and that's a lot of games that you have to win. So you need to be in most of them if you want to actually win them. And that's why starting pitching is just so, so important. And for the Mets, it's like, okay, you let Zach Wheeler walk. What is next? Now, so far... What we've heard today is this idea that the Mets have mutual interest with pitcher Rick Porcello. Now, Porcello is a veteran pitcher. He's a pitcher that I personally am fond of. And the reason why is he's durable, he's reliable, so he will make every start. I think that's something that's extremely important, especially to a team like the Mets. Because the thing that the Mets got really lucky with the past couple years is the help that they've had from the starting pitching. Because that didn't happen in years past. You think the injuries that Matt Harvey suffered when he was with the Mets, that lat injury that Noah Syndergaard had, the form injury that DeGrom had, obviously the injuries that Zach Wheeler had, and then Steven Matz, he's always so inconsistent with the injuries. He always has nagging stuff that is going on. But for the Mets in the last couple years, they have not had a serious injuries to the starting rotation staff. And that has been massive for them because the other big problem with the Mets is that they have no starting pitching depth. So even if the Mets did retain Zach Wheeler and they paid the $100 million that it was going to cost to do that, which the Mets obviously would not do because of where their money situation is right now. But still, it's just like they would have to hope that for a third straight year, the starting rotation would come out intact, no injuries. Again, that is extremely hard to do. Again, the Mets have been very lucky. And they honestly have to pray that that luck holds up because they still don't have the starting pitcher depth. As a matter of fact, they don't even have a fifth starting pitcher. Now that Zach Wheeler has walked away. So, if you do sign Rick Porcello, will you be okay? 
Now, that's not going to be your biggest problem. Rick Porcello is no Zach Wheeler. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. Wheeler is a better pitcher than Porcello. He will go deeper into games. He will allow fewer runs. And we know that Zach Wheeler can perform in a Mets uniform. Where we can't say the same for Rick Porcello. Porcello can give you good games. Obviously, the Yankees are well aware of that. He pitched pretty good for the Red Sox when they won the World Series. He was a big part of that. But from game to game throughout the course of the season, he's a guy that's going to have ERA in the fours, possibly even the fives. Porcello is going to give up runs, but he will also give you starts and he will give you innings. As a number five pitcher, he would be very solid. The thing that the Mets are really going to have to count on is a big-time improvement from Noah Syndergaard and for Marcus Stroman to build on what he did at the very end of last season. When the Mets first got Marcus Stroman, he was not pitching like the guy that they traded for. The pitcher that he was in the first half for the Toronto Blue Jays, an all-star caliber guy. But as the season progressed in his last couple starts, Marcus Stroman was much more like the pitcher that the Mets had hoped for. And now with Wheeler gone, he's going to have to be that guy. Now the other option that the Mets have th- talked about is having Robert Gazelman or Seth Lugo move into starting rotation. In theory, that would work. You would have a perfectly fine starting pitcher, whether that is Gazelman or Lugo. Probably Lugo. Gazelman is still too inconsistent for me. He is not that pitcher that he was in 2016. Meanwhile, I know Seth Lugo is still a tremendous pitcher, no matter what role he is in. But here's the problem. Robert Gazelman and Seth Lugo, particularly Lugo, are your most important pieces in the bullpen. You're reliable guys. And the Mets' bullpen is such a weakness, you cannot make it an even bigger weakness. So I really don't think that is the option. You're better off getting a Rick Porcello or some other veteran than messing with your bullpen. Because the thing that has made me the most angry with the Mets' offseason so far is the fact that they have not done not only nothing to upgrade the team, but they have done nothing to upgrade the bullpen. And what really concerns me is that I see these articles saying about how the Mets' bullpen can be okay or, you know, it could work based off of what they already have. And I think that is the world's biggest mistake is to rely on improvement from within for this particular Mets' bullpen. I think that when you saw how bad Edwin Diaz was and how it was in his head to the point where when Edwin Diaz would give up a home run and then he'd go back in the dugout, You can see it in his face. He was concerned and that after every game he's being interviewed about it. So it definitely was a mental thing going on with Edwin Diaz. He knew that he was not anywhere close to the pitcher that he was in Seattle. Had a pretty good start to the season, but after that, I mean, things just got worse and worse and worse. And Edwin Diaz wasn't even one of those guys where it's like, where Strowman, you could say, okay, he finished the season strong. We have, you know, an idea that there could be good things coming next year for Edwin Diaz. We don't feel that way at all about him. So that is going to be a huge part of what the Mets have to do with the bullpen. they got to figure out the Edwin Diaz thing. Even if you have to trade him, you have to do something. And that would be a really big problem because of what the Mets gave up to get Edwin Diaz. And the big problem with the Diaz trade is that people could complain about Kellenic and other prospects leaving the Mets. But the main problem that happened with the Mets was acquiring Rob Zucano's contract. That's the thing that has really hurt them right now because... Even if you did have Kalenic on this team, it isn't really going to help you because he's still not major league ready. And is Kalenic an everyday center fielder? We don't know that. He's another left-handed outfielder, which the Mets already have in Brandon Nimmo and Michael Conforto. I said last year, I believe Kalenic was overkill for this particular team. Now, if Conforto were to walk in free agency in a year or two, which I think is very possible, then Kalenic would slide right in perfectly. Or if you want to trade Brandon Nimmo for Sterling Marte and put Kalenic in, that would work as well. But what has happened with the Robinson Cano thing is that it has just absolutely, it really has put the Mets in a spot where they are handicapped by that contract. They cannot make any moves because of the money they have committed to Robinson Cano, among others. But Cano is the big problem because the other thing that's been talked about is moving Jed Lowry's contract. Now, that would be something that it would be like such a loss because Jed Lowry played a couple games this year, had a few pinch hit at bats, didn't get a single hit was out the entire year due to injury. And if you were to just give him up for the sake of money and have to attach a young player to him, that would be a huge loss for the Mets and a really big blemish in Brody Van Wagner's resume as a member of the Mets general manager. So I don't really like that. But the thing with Lowry is that that's one year that is committed. And some of the other players, Jerry's familiar, he has two years committed. And the thing with Robinson Cano is that you still have another four years at a higher value than Familia 
or Jen Lowry. That's the big problem is that you want to say, okay, well, if you back loan a contract, not that you were to get a Rendon, but if you were to spend the money on a player of Rendon's caliber, a lot of money committed, you can make the long-term deal because you don't have much money committed going forward, but you do with Robinson Cano. I mean, that's max player dollars. That's $20 million plus on a player who personally I think belongs on the bench. That is the other big thing. It's like even though you gave up a good amount to get Edwin Diaz, it doesn't hurt you that much in the future. Yes, you did lose the prospects. But it's like Edwin Diaz is getting paid a lot of money. I mean, he still has had a really good contract for his stuff that we hear so much about, but we have not seen the result. I think the Cano thing is a much bigger deal. And like I said before, it also blocks what the Mets want to do with their lineup. And unfortunately, they let Joe Panic walk as well. They are yet to resign him, and I really don't think that they will based off of the message that they've put across. But I would rather have Jeff McNeil at second base. I don't like putting him at a position. I really don't like having J.D. Davis at a position. The other thing we've heard about is that the Mets are trying to trade J.D. Davis as part of maybe a Sterling Marte trade or another move that they could potentially consider. I believe that is a mistake as well because I think J.D. Davis provided a lot for this team that really went under the radar and is something that you can't really replicate, and again, at his salary number. I think another good you know, transition to what the Mets have been going on today is with the idea of the owners maybe changing ownership and Cohen giving 80% to try to get majority of the Mets and the way the Mets have been in the past years, always trying to spend, save money, not spend it at all. And that is what we saw with the Zach Wheeler contract, the way the Mets, they gave no effort to re-sign him. It's like, oh, it's going to cost money? Never mind. We're going to let Zach Wheeler walk. And that has happened time and time again. And it's what I and all of the Mets fans, that's been the biggest problem. It's just the fact that it's like, okay, well, you have Pete Alonso or you have McNeil and DeGrom and Conforto, Rosario. You have quality players on this team, Noah Syndergaard, Stephen Matz, but will you spend the money to get the pieces around them that it takes to become an actual winning team? And the answer year after year has been no. The Mets don't spend enough money. Everybody knows it's been written about, it's been talked about. I'm trying to preach about it right now. So we know that's a big problem. And now Met fans are going crazy, celebrating like it's the biggest thing since going to the World Series 2015 that the Mets could, you know, Will Ponds could be selling away the team. And it, and it seems like a big deal at first, but the first problem is that it's not going to happen for another five years. And I think that's something that people really are overlooking. It's like, okay, the Wolpons are signing the team, but it's not happening yet. It's happening in five years. And so much could change in five years. One of the other big problems for the Mets is that they have not re-signed Pete Alonso or Jeff McNeil, nor has there been any talk about it. And I think that is a really big problem as well because you look at so many other teams, we've talked about a lot before, but think of the team in your division that has won the division year after year. The Atlanta Braves, the way they've re-signed Acuna and, and Ozzy Albies, that is something the Mets should do with Alonzo and McNeil. I mean, that is just a no doubt about it and a no-brainer because you could get them at a much better value than they are worth. And you would really would really it would give something for the fans, something for the team going forward that you could be excited about. It's like, all right, well, at least we have Alonzo and McNeil long-term, you know, our two best players. That, that would be very important because you gave DeGrom the extension, you'd want to give it to your other All-Stars. But the Mets are yet to do that. So in five years, we don't even know who's going to be on this team. Because let's just say that, you know, the Wilpons are not the majority owners. They don't have the main say in who's on the team and who's not. But the thing is, by the time that happens, who is on the team? I think that's something that is really not talked about. The Mets could be an absolutely terrible team in five years. That wouldn't surprise me at all because of the route that they have been going. The way that they are just letting players walk. They are not making upgrades. DeGrom's going to get older and older. There's no way Noah Syndergaard is going to stay on this team. Steven Matz, I mean, that's a maybe. I don't think Stroman's going to stay on this team because all these guys are going to want more money in these next five years. And the Wolpons, even though they're on their way out, they still won't give the money to those players. So those guys are going to walk. Your starting rotation is going to be a nightmare. You will have DeGrom and nothing else. Maybe Matz. That's it. Your bullpen continues to get worse and worse, has been a problem for forever. Honestly, when was the last time the Mets had a good bullpen? I mean, 2015, it was pretty good. But then the World Series, it fell apart because Clippard was not reliable and Jerry's Familia was not reliable. So once that happened, the Mets' bullpen has been a problem. And 2016, no good. 2017, awful. 2018, really, really bad. This year, extremely bad as well. So the bullpen is still going to be a problem in five years. Again, who's going to be in your lineup? You are not going to have a catcher. 
you're probably not going to re-sign Conforto and Nimmo. So you're going to need an outfield. Your Cespedes won't be on this team. J.D. Davis, you're trying to trade him. He probably won't be here. You mean to tell me that the Mets are going to give him one to Alonzo and McNeil and Jacob DeGrom? Then who's going to be around them? So I think fans do need to calm down on the excitement. I get why they are excited. But that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that the Mets are going to be good. They really have to focus on one year at a time because here's the thing. It doesn't take much to make this team right now that they have a playoff team. You look at how there were only a few games out last year and things. a lot of things broke right. And that's another thing I want to get into is the fact that you could say, yeah, you know, the Mets were really close last year. And they were. They were very close to the wild card. But think of how many things went right. They had Pete Alonso really go above expectations and become the rookie of the year, lead all the baseball and home runs. Jeff McNeil was an all-star, had a 300 average. He was up there with the bang title until he became pull happy in the second half. Jacob DeGrom went back-to-back Cy Youngs, which is very hard to do and not something that we predicted. We knew DeGrom would be good, but not that good. Seth Lugo was one of the best relievers in baseball last year. Even though people want to say he blew a couple games here or there, listen, all relievers blow games. You cannot give me a reliever last season that didn't blow a game. And the Mets, now they want to look at Josh Hader. And I'm staying away from that because what happened to Josh Hader in the playoffs? He blew that wild card do or die game against the Washington Nationals. Trent Grisham made a mistake in right field. But how do we know Josh Hader was going to get out of that inning? We don't because Josh Hader had already put the Milwaukee Brewers in that kind of scenario. And the Mets would have to give up a lot to get Hader. And I just don't see it working. It screams Edwin Diaz 2.0 to me. So I really don't think that's the answer. But, I mean, you have the bullpen problems, and they have not done anything about it. The best reliever on the market goes to the Braves, who already made moves last season to address the bullpen, getting guys like Shane Green and Mark Melanson and Chris Martin. The Braves have always made moves to address the bullpen. The Mets still have not done anything, and it's not going to be as simple as putting Lugo or putting Gazelman in the rotation. Because if they do that, the Mets will have one of the worst bullpens in all of baseball. Justin Wilson was pretty good last year. And that was some, he was somebody who went over expectations. We did not think that Justin Wilson was going to be the Mets' second best reliever, the eighth inning guy, sometimes the ninth inning guy, or the seventh inning guy. He was supposed to be just a lefty specialist that came in here or there. He was not supposed to be better than Edwin Diaz and better than Jerry's Familia. So you went into the year expecting that you're going to have an 8-9 combination of Familia and Diaz. That has not been the case, and there's no guarantee it is going to be the case next year. I still think those guys are not good enough to be the 8th and ninth inning guys. And again, just the way the Mets have done nothing to address this team, it is so concerning to me. Like, what are they going to do? Are they going to do anything? I don't know. If they got a Rick Porcello, okay, your team is still worse than it was last year. How are you going to improve? I mean, the defense is bad. Again, the bullpen is bad. The offense was inconsistent. I, I just don't see it. The starting pitching was inconsistent. Think of Noah Syndergaard, Stroman, Mats, and Porcel. Like I said, he's not going to be locked down. He's going to be the team's fifth best pitcher. So I really don't like what I'm seeing at all. I think the Zach Wheeler thing, that, that was a big deal. I know the Mets weren't going to retain him, but it's just the fact that it went to another division rival the way they let this happen over and over, that the Nationals get better, the Braves get better, the Phillies get better, and the Mets get worse, and they're like, doesn't matter, and, and they think that they're going to win. It just isn't going to happen. So I'm, I'm really disappointed because the end of last year, it was exciting. It was nice to see the Mets finally win some games and have conversation about them possibly making the postseason. And now, with the way this offseason has been going and the way their division has gotten better and better, we know that isn't going to be the case. Even if the Mets made a trade for Sterling Marte, what would they have to give up in the meantime? Would they have to give up J.D. Davis? Would they have to give up Brandon Nimmo? And if they did, how much would that upgrade the team? And it wouldn't upgrade it much. The center field defense, it would be a little better. But here's the thing. If the Mets had Sterling Marte last year, would center field defense have gotten the Mets into the playoffs? No, it wouldn't. And that's why like, it's going to take so much more than that. The bullpen was a lot bigger problem than center field was. And now with the relievers, it's like, who else is out there? Who could the Mets get? Some people want to see the Mets sign Dell and Batances. And at this rate, at first, I wasn't crazy about it because Batances is one of those guys, like a lot of relievers, he has his good games, he has his bad games, his control could be wild. He is now showing that he's kind of an injury guy. He's a lot older than people think. He's in his 30s. And Batances, he comes back from the injury and then he messes up his Achilles. That's something they don't just recover from and become the pitcher that you once were. So I, I think Batances is definitely a big-time risk. And I don't think that 
the Mets could just sign Dylan Batanz and be like, okay, we fixed the bullpen. That's all we need to do. That is not the case at all either. So I don't like that. And it's just like, what are they going to do? Because there isn't much to do. The fact that you let Will Smith get away and you didn't re-sign Zach Wheeler and you haven't done anything as players have just been going off. And it seems like the hot stove is picking up because players are getting signed. They're getting traded. And it's like, there's going to be nothing left for you to do. So when the Mets are the fourth place team next year, I don't say I didn't warn you. So I, I'm just very, very sad that this has happened. The season hasn't even started. It's not even 2020. And my expectations are like rock bottom floor level. They're going to barely be better than the Marlins. It's going to be the same thing every year. They'll be good in September and in April and maybe a little bit of August. And that's going to be it. It's going to be like the same Mets every single year because their approach is the same. They don't make the big time move that you have to make to get the team over the top. And it's not just Batances. It's like Will Smith plus Batances plus another guy. Like you have to make a lot of moves to improve the bullpen because you also have to be ready for other things that could happen. You need starting rotation depth. What if Noah Senegar gets hurt next year? The Mets are screwed because they have nobody that could fill in for him and they would have a loss every five days. What if Seth Lugo got hurt or is that the same guy again? Because relievers are tricky. What if Lugo does have another lockdown year? The Mets are in such trouble and like they are doing nothing about it and everyone's going crazy. Oh, but the Wolpons are selling the team. If the Mets are a losing team, who cares who the owner is? They just have, they have to do something. So when they do anything, I will podcast about it. But until then... Be on the lookout. I'm going to write an article about why the Mets cannot trade J.D. Davis and why I think that is a major mistake and why he is underappreciated and as well as some other football stuff, maybe some basketball stuff I'll be writing about. Until then, have it going, everybody. If you like this video, leave a like, comment. What is your feedback on the Zach Wheeler contract about the Mets offseason rumors? What moves do you think they should be considering? And until then, have it going, everybody.